If you've been wondering how you can take a simple and highly effective mouse trap or rat trap and turn it into something that's fairly complicated, volatile, and almost beyond practical use, but lots of fun, well, you're in the right place because today I'm going to show you how to make this. Making things, making things again. Yeah, we're going to make some things again. My making dance. I'm really not completely sure why I actually made this, but I think part of my inspiration was Indiana Jones. Since I was a kid, I've always really liked the opening scene of Raiders of the Lost Ark, where he's in a booby trap temple, doing a bit of souvenir shopping, and he's like, hey, that gold idol's gonna look pretty sweet on my desk at work. I'll trade you a bag of sand for it. And the temple's like, oh, nah, get f***ed. Eight automatic wall projecting arrows. And they're like, pew, 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 pew. And I was like, yeah, wall projecting arrows. I want that. Based on my previous tripwire arrow trap, or twat, this trap is a rapid array of 12 or infinitely more spring traps loaded with chopstick arrows, which is also target focusable. Yeah, on my last video in the comments, someone said you're a twat, but this is some spelling issues. They meant you made a twat, which I did. At a leisurely firing rate of 50 arrows per second, it can be conveniently used around the house, I'm sure, in some way, like for perforating cardboard. And other things where you might need lots of arrows really quickly. We'll try a few things today to try and justify its existence. So let's go build something. If you did miss my previous video, to summarize in this I modified some takeaway chopsticks by sharpening the end into an arrow, inserting a coat hanger wire hook, put some feathers on the end, and then hook the arrow onto the holding bar of a rat trap. The front of the arrow is then hooked onto a taut rubber band, which does some other stuff, and then there was some fishing line or something, and lots of other details, but you end up with this cool thing that can be used to destroy cups of tea. So this tripwire arrow trap is pretty much the basis for this build, except I have to do the same thing 12 times. But then I also need to work out a way to mount them all together so they can be aimed, plus a way to have them all set each other off in a nice big sequence, because that'll be cool. Now there's a lot of arrows to be made, and I'll probably need some spare ones too, but I managed to convince Kristen to assist. So she went to work making all of the arrows, which is helpful, but maybe not so helpful is that she discovered when you put them all side by side, they make love hearts. Love arrows for delivering love and stabbiness. <laughs> With Kristen doing the woodwork on the arrows, I went to work making the little metal coat hanger wire hooks that hook onto the rubber bands, which we needed at least 12 of. With that done, the last part of the arrows was gluing on all of the feathers, which Kristen also kindly did, to free up my time to stare blankly at some traps on a table. So I managed to pick up 12 traps and a few spare at the hardware store, which always invites some weird questions that I don't have answers to. And I've then arranged these to a nice rectangle shape, which will be the shape of our rapid array tripwire arrow trap. Now it's just a case of working out how I'm gonna mount all of these, each with their own independent barrel, which probably isn't necessary, but I reckon it'll look pretty cool. With some kind of vision in mind, I kind of just went to work freestyling, cutting up bits of timber to mount across the back to make up some kind of frame. Using some MDF, I've cut out three panels which will serve as bases for each of the rows of traps. Here I am dusting my shirt down. Important detail. So with each MDF panel, I've just put a bit of timber across the back and I'm going to screw that on. And then I've got myself three independent trap mounting boards, which are going to be mounted like this by some means. In preparation for drilling the holes in the traps, I've tried to be as accurate as possible just so the holes will line up in case I have to swap out any broken traps. And then it's just a case of lots of drilling and lots of countersinking. Wall climb. Now the Australian accent does get a bit in the way sometimes, but after a comment on my previous video, just to clarify, this little tool is called a countersink bit and not a can of sink bitch. I then went about mounting all the traps to the backboards and I've chucked an extra bit of timber across the back of all four traps for a bit of extra strength. And we have ourselves the final arrangement. Time to make some barrels. Making the PVC barrels is pretty much the same as the previous trap I made, 
except a little bit shorter. Not that I gave the most accurate measurements the first time around. If you're looking for a cool way to mark a pencil line all the way around a PVC tube, just put it in a pipe vise and then slowly rotate it like this. And then when you get to the end, it'll all be f***ed up and kind of shitty. I cut up six lengths of tube, which we split in half down the middle to give us our 12 half barrels. Like previously for cutting them in half, I use this big weird saw that I found. I did a call out to anyone who knows what it's actually from. There was some mixed opinions, so in the end I just named him Maurice. I've put Maurice to work splitting all the pipes in halves, and we're onto lots of scraping to get the edges nice and neat so they don't tear up our rubber bands. Then drilling all the holes so we can mount the barrels to the bases. With that finished, I've chopped in the notches and drilled the holes in the end so we have somewhere to mount the rubber bands. To mount the barrels, I'll be using these screws that are way too long, and I'll just chop them off with the angle grinder later, because it's all about quality here on the Turner 81 channel, and not about rushing up to the shop to get the appropriate screws. Not the rushing up to the shop channel, that's a different channel. In mounting these up, I've tried to keep the barrels at a nice and neat 90 degrees. It's really starting to take shape. Now here's what I'm thinking. All these arrows will obviously come out and spray in a big rectangular arrangement. So the idea behind having each set of four on its own backboard is I'll be able to focus the fire into a single line. I won't be able to focus the outside traps towards the middle, but it still should be pretty good. At this point, I'm not completely sure how it's actually going to move, but I figure I'll put some door hinges on there just to hold each section in place. So far it hinges pretty good because it's being a hinge, doing its thing. Flappy flappy hinges, flappy flappy hinge. This has all worked out quite nicely, except now you can see the new problem, which is as soon as I stand this up on end, it's gonna go all jelly spine and collapse in a big heap. Now, ideally I want the shelves to all move with a single adjustment rather than having to move each one separately. So it's that time again to stand and stare blankly at it until an idea comes to mind. Oh, he's got a plan, he's got a plan, he's off. In here I've got a turnbuckle, which I figure will be quite handy because it has an opposite thread on each end. The other ingredients I've salvaged from around the shed include a bit of rusty old flat bar with some holes in it, a bucket handle, a couple of nuts, two old coach bolts that have fallen out of the pergola, and a piece of steel rod. Oh, and a bit of threaded rod. And with this, we'll be able to create something. All right, I'm gonna chop a little piece of the bucket handle off and then unthread the hook end of the turnbuckle, which I will weld in here to close this gap up. And it's time to get welding. Always gotta have some sparks in a YouTube video because they are pretty. The bucket handle has done a pretty good job. Uh, the bucket doesn't have a handle anymore though, so that's kind of f***ed. Taking the middle part of the turnbuckle, I'm going to chop it in half, and also chop off a piece of the threaded rod. Then I'm going to weld the threaded rod up the middle here, so we have ourselves one big long turnbuckle nut thing. And now I'm going to chop myself off a piece of rusty flat bar. Oh yeah, more sparks. I'm going to chuck a hole in there that will fit the threaded rod through it, and bend it over. I've thrown a couple of nuts on my rod, which will hold this plate in place while letting the rod freely rotate in it, becoming our arrow fire focus adjusting thingy. And then I can weld the turnbuckles on the end. Now the ends of the rod are welded. If you do need to remove the nuts later, the best way to do this is by not building a big f off ridiculous rapid array tripwire arrow trap. I'm gonna get the support bracket just temporarily mounted up and then going to put the coach bolts through each eyelet. So the idea is, as we turn this rod, it'll pull together or push apart the top and bottom rows of the traps. Plus the beauty about having the nuts on here is I can fine tune the adjustment of this middle shelf of traps. After messing around a bit, I got to a point I was pretty happy with and locked up the nuts. Standing it up on end seems to be holding up quite well. Then there's just a little bit more adjusting using the spirit level. Now for such a dodgy improvised piece of crap, I'm pretty stoked how this works. By just turning the single adjustment knob, we've got three rows of traps independently focusing the barrels into place, rather than having to adjust it by some other means, like, I don't know, your hands or some shit. 
Now, on to working out a way to get all of the traps to trigger in a big sequence. We'll grab the old coat hanger wire again, and then bend up some of these things. Then I can thread up each one of these through the trap. So, as one hammer bar comes over and hits the coat hanger wire, it then pushes on the bait tray of the next trap, triggering that, while hopefully being easier to adjust because I can just bend it into shape. Now we'll just give the first row a test to see if our plan is working. Sweet, that works pretty good, and it's pretty loud too. Now, a plan for linking each shelf together while allowing them to all still move freely. Using the old fire stick, I've heated up some coat hanger wire so I can get some more intricate bends into it. Then I've screwed this onto the side as a linkage, which the hammer bar will hit, hopefully then triggering the next row. With that done, and all the traps set, it goes a little something like this. It's stupidly loud in the confines of the shed, but it's a thing of beauty. Rubber band time. So, do you know how hard it is to find matching rubber bands in an assorted bag? On a scale of 1 to 10, it's f***ing hard. So I've kind of improvised myself a little rubber band length and force measuring thing that'll hopefully allow me to compare bands side by side because I don't want the arrows firing at different rates because that's going to look stupid. So, I don't really know what I've created here, but when the hook lines up with the line on the piece of wood that I'm moving, I then take a measurement from the ruler and then find myself a collection of similar sized and strength rubber bands. It seemed to do the trick. In getting ready for the first test fire, I've started to load the first couple of rubber bands, and I had the realization that each time I do this, the previously installed arrows are gonna have a pretty good chance of going off by mistake and shooting me in the hand, which would probably be pretty funny for you guys, but a bad thing for me. But hey, hit the like button, I'll do it, I'll do it. So to keep my hands at a bit of a distance, I've got an old paint roller and knocked up a bit of a rubber band pulling thing. And then it's back to the slow and scary process of putting in arrow by arrow while trying not to touch one of the 12 traps, because one slip up will set off the entire chain reaction. With it fully loaded and string in hand, it's time to test it out. And the result? Glorious! Okay, I put a little safety catch on there in case the trip wire was triggered while I was loading it. With that removed, we'll give it another go. Oh uh, yeah, must be a second safety catch that I don't remember making or putting on there, which is why it's not working. Not because the design is crap. So the wires joining everything together need a little bit of bending and refinement, but I'll set the rest off just to see how it goes. Oh yeah! And this will likely be a reoccurring hazard. I need to make sure that every arrow has actually left a trap and not assume and then just walk in front of it. I'll just ease this one out the way and put it over there. Oh, oh no, I'll take it over there. After a little more refinement, we're ready for another test. Okay, we're getting a little bit closer this time. Now getting all the arrows to go off in one nice sequence will be a case of just refining it a little bit. A lot of them seem to be getting sideways as they leave the barrel, and they're tangling up in the rubber bands and stabbing through them like this, which is getting a little bit frustrating. And looking at it from the top, I think I can see what's going on now. It looks like because the spring at the trap is so heavy, it's flicking the holding bar around quite quickly, which is giving the arrow an ass slap on its way down the barrel, which is putting a bit of a spin on it. Now this kind of sucks because it basically writes off this entire design, and I really need to have that mainspring set so it will set off the next trap, and the next trap after that. I tried making up these little PVC posts, in the slow motions it appeared to work, so I did it for all the traps, and it turns out it wasn't working, and that was just a big waste of time. Yay! But in the end, I figured it out. The arrow just needs to be hooked onto something that's not flicking around so violently. So I made up this little secondary latch for each of the traps. After doing that, I gave it a few more tests and it works a lot better, although still pretty average at times, but that's good enough for me. And the final thing to test out before having a crack at some targets is to test how well it focuses all the arrows into a single row. And that's pretty good, compared to the single arrow trap. If I was going for a rat with these 12 arrows, I reckon I've doubled my chances. Or even 12 did them, 12 did, did, 
Now with the tripwire tied in place, it's time to test how well the Rapid Array Twat will help with our polystyrene rat infestation. The barrels all seem to focus down nicely while loaded without any of the traps going off unexpectedly. The rat slowly edges his way closer to the trip line and it's tripped him over. It's worked out perfectly. We spent a lot of time making a device that just trips rats over. Great work, great work. We're all set up to test it again and here he comes. Only the first two rows of arrows have gone off and somehow he's managed to avoid all of them. Okay, a few adjustments to get all the rows firing and we'll give it another crack. Yeah, okay, a couple of arrows have got him in the butt there. We can probably do better. A few more adjustments and a reset and we're ready to have another go at this. Again, only the first row was fired, but we've got a clear shot right in the side. But I think I'm gonna make the call, he's dead. I'm going to go a few more attempts before I move on to test some other potential household applications. Only one row was fired again, but I'm pretty happy with that result. Oh no, there the others go. There they are. They were just down on Smoko or something. Okay, I reckon I could get that to work on the rat, but because it takes a while to set up 12 arrows each time, I'm pretty curious how it will fare against some other household tasks. Alright, say so you're having a few friends around and you want to make some fruit kebabs. With the fruit chopped up, let's see if this will automate the process. Alright, no more individually threading bits of fruit onto a stick. You know, a few guests may end up with a kebab with no fruit and only a bit of coat hanger wire or polystyrene foam on the end. But for the ones that do work, perfect. Just look at that time saving. That's some solid time saving right there. <laughs> what about if you want to open a can of soft drink and you can't find a bottle opener? No worries. Except it looks like none of the arrows have bitten in. Heaps have grazed off it. You can see the little grooves all over the can. We'll have another go, this time round in an attempt to get a bit more penetration I've used my nail tipped arrows which I'll show you how to make in the first rat trap video. Let's give it a go. And the backdrop takes a slow awkward drunken fall. And I really should have gone in for a tea bag here. There you go, a convenient way to open a beverage can, which you can then drink out of the side from, and spend half an hour cleaning up. Okay, another possible practical use is sticking marshmallows on a stick to then cook over a campfire. Marshmallows served. And the hot glue we used on the arrow just adds to the flavour. I know that something people struggle with on a daily basis is finding creative ways to set off a domino chain reaction. So I thought let's give that a go. Apart from the arrow that ricocheted and went past Kristen's head, it all worked out pretty good. What was that? That was an oh. arrow. Now you may have seen in my previous video I was looking for a solution to getting a hot piece of toast out of a toaster without burning my fingers. The single arrow trap did a pretty decent job, but let's see how we'll go with 12 arrows. On a side note, make sure you comment with ideas on other things I can test this on around the house. With the tripwire set above the toaster, it's then just a case of waiting for the toast to do its thing. Not too bad, only one hit this time, but it serves as a nice kickstand to allow your toast to cool down. However, putting the topping on is still a bit of a manual task, but I'll resolve that next time. Thank you heaps for watching. Please don't subscribe. My wife says you're all only encouraging this behavior. Uh, thank you to my Patreon supporters. Maybe check out my Patreon page. My name is Craig Turner. The YouTube channel is Turner81 or 1081 if you voice type it, but that'll lead you nowhere. I'll catch you next time. Yeah. <laughs>